Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to take a look at a library in P5.js called the Touch GUI library. So if you are unfamiliar with the libraries in P5.js, if you go to the P5.js website, p5.js.org, and you go to libraries, there are a whole bunch of community libraries that are included here. Uh, and I certainly recommend you look through and find some that seem interesting to you. But the one that we're going to look at is down here and is called the Touch GUI Library, which is a multi-touch and mouse GUI library. GUI meaning graphic user interface. It was created by Carlos L05 Garcia. So I'm going to click here and it takes us to the GitHub for this library and all the reference and documentation is here. So the Touch GUI library gives us a lot of options in ways that we can add some kinds of user interfaces to our P5 sketches in a very quick and easy way. So we can add buttons, toggle switches, sliders, checkboxes, crossfaders, two-dimensional sliders that we can then um, access the values of those things and use them to manipulate and interact with our sketches in P5.js. So in this video here, which I believe will be the first of a few, I'm going to show you how to first get the touch GUI library going in a P5.js sketch, and then we're going to create a button. So the documentation is also here in GitHub, but I'm just going to kind of walk you through what to do. So you could just click this link, and this will take you to the web editor with the touch GUI library already loaded, but I'm going to show you how you can do that on your own in case you've never uh, worked with an external library. Uh, and this is often the time how you can add any library into your P5.js sketch. So this right here is the script that we need to copy and paste into our HTML file that will give us access to the Touch GUI library. So I'm just going to highlight this and copy it. And now I'm going to jump into the P5.js web editor and I click this little arrow here, which shows me the files that are a part of this P5.js sketch. So I have my sketch.js, my JavaScript file, my uh, CSS file, which we don't really do much with, uh, and then our index.html file. So this is where I need to go. And in the head here, right underneath this script, which is for uh, the P5.js sound library, I'm just going to paste that one line of code that I copied from the GitHub uh, right in there. And that is all I need to get up and running with this GUI library. Now I'm going to press play. Obviously nothing is going to happen because I haven't written any code yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable called GUI. Um, and this is going to be a variable where I'm going to store the GUI object uh, of the touch GUI library. So the way I need to do that is I'm going to go now into setup and I'm going to assign the GUI object to this variable to which I can then kind of get everything up and running. So GUI equals, and I'm going to do create capital G GUI open close parentheses. And I'll press play there and still no error. So everything is good. And then the next thing I need to do is go into draw and then I'm going to write the command draw capital G that should be GUI. And then I press play again and no errors, but nothing has happened. So why didn't it draw anything? Well, now I need to choose an object from the GUI library that I want to use in my sketch. So as we said, there's a lot of different options. There's different kinds of buttons, toggle switches, check boxes. So we're just going to start with a simple button here. So the first thing I need to do is create a variable uh, which is going to hold on to the object button and give me a name to which I can refer to that object in my sketch. I'm just going to call this button. You can call it whatever you want. Um, customarily, it's good to pick a variable name that is going to be related to what that variable is actually going to do. So now once I have a name for the object I intend to make, I'm going to assign this variable the object, which in this case is going to be a button. So button equals, and I'm going to create capital B button 
open close parentheses. Now, in this is how we create objects in the Touch GUI library. It's usually create and then the name of the object. It could be slider, it could be a two-dimensional slider, a toggle. Uh, in this case, it's a button. Always make sure you check the documentation to know exactly what uh, function you need to call here to create the object. Now, first argument it's going to take is a name, and we'll just call this button for now. And then, so most of the functions in the Touch GUI library will take a name uh, as the first argument, and then the next two arguments are going to be the x and y position of that object on the canvas here. So I'm just going to go at 50x and 50y. And now if I press play, you see this button appears. And I can click it. Nothing's happening yet, but that is the idea. Uh, so that just took a couple lines of code, and now I have a button right here in my sketch that I can use to make stuff happen. Now, just so you know, I could add some additional arguments, this to change the size of my button. So if I wanted to maybe make this uh, like a square button, the Next argument would be how big it is on the x axis and then how big it's going to be on the y axis. If I press here, now you see I have a nice square button as opposed to the default size. So now that I have this button, um, I want to make it do something. So I'll, when I click this button, I want something to happen. So I'm going to go into draw now and I'm going to use the is pressed method. So um, this would return a boolean variable which would be true or false so really i want to use this in a conditional statement of which i'm going to do my kind of skeleton here so if and then the parentheses which is where the condition will be put that will be evaluated as true or false and then inside of these parentheses here will be the code i want to run if the condition evaluates as true so i'm going to refer to the button that i created which is called button and then dot is capital P pressed All right and just to see that it's working let's do console dot log button is pressed and so now I press play no errors and I press the button and you see in the console button is pressed I press again it happens again so that is all I need to do in order to make something happen with this button so maybe what we could do here is I'm gonna maybe make an ellipse uh, just at say 200 200 and then we'll go 80 so press play here so I have an ellipse and what we can have happen is when I press the button we'll make this ellipse turn red all right so everything's going I press the button and my ellipse turns red so that is all I need to happen there and now I could that is just for is pressed so when I do is pressed it's just going to trigger once when I press it now there's another method called is held so what this would do is as long as I'm clicking the mouse on the button that whatever is in here will continue to happen so this will continue to evaluate as true until I let go of the button um, so now in this case I'm gonna add an else statement so if the button is being held it's gonna make my ellipse turn red however if I'm not holding the button we will just return I'll that back to white. So now I'm going to rerun here. So I click and hold the button, and I'm holding it, and then I let go, and it turns white. And then I can click and hold it again, and as long as I'm holding it, it will evaluate as true. So the ellipse is red, I let go, it turns white. So that is how we can work with a button in the Touch GUI library. So uh, in the next tutorial, I will show you how to use a slider in the Touch GUI library. So be sure to check that next one out.
see you there.